The story of Purim is one of the most fascinating stories in Jewish history. At the center of it all is Queen Esther. In fact, the story was recorded in a document called Megillus Esther, the scroll of Esther. What made Esther so amazing was the dichotomy of her life. She began quiet, meek, subordinate, and unambitious, never displaying any sort of confidence or strength, despite her apparent beauty and status. The Megillah says, anything Mordechai said, Esther did. She becomes queen, and the king says, who are you? She says, nobody. Where are you from? Nowhere. And then something happens, and she transforms into this power broker who stares down death and single-handedly outplays the king and Haman, the two most powerful men in the empire, and saves the Jewish people from annihilation. What happened? How did she transform like that? If you look closely at the story, you'll see the moment of transformation. Here's the background. King Ahasuerus, the ruler of most of the civilized world, has an evil minister named Haman, who rises through the ranks and attains the ultimate power, the king's signet ring. Now, he has the ability to do anything and create any law he wants. And being a super anti-Semite, he uses his new legislative power to create a decree to destroy the Jews. The Jews find out and freak out, appropriately so. Mordechai, their leader, starts to rally the troops, fasting, repenting, protesting, and crying, trying everything in their power to cancel the decree. Mordechai calls Queen Esther, his niece, and says, you got to help out. you got to get into the king's chamber and tell him to stop the decree. He doesn't realize what Haman's doing. Esther says, go into the king's chamber. You know that going into the king's chamber uninvited is punishable by death. I can't just go in. I'm Esther, for God's sakes. And Mordechai says something to her that turns her into the heroine she will be remembered forever. He says, Esther, If you keep quiet now during this crisis, Don't worry. If we're meant to be saved, we'll be saved from someplace else. But you and your legacy will perish. He got Lamachus. And who knows? If this is the reason why you became queen. He said, Esther, maybe you became queen not because you're so beautiful or well connected, but for this moment to step up and save the day. Maybe God specifically gave you all that you have and put you into this circumstance, not for your own personal glory or safety, but to be his emissary for good, to help, to make a difference to change the world. But if you can't see past yourself, if you can't help now, then maybe your purpose is for nothing. And it clicks. She says, all right, go gather the Jews, start fasting, start rocking, everybody get going, I'm doing this. And she walks in and pulls a performance of a lifetime, saves the Jews, and her bravery lives on in posterity. What an amazing concept. Mordechai teaches Esther one of the most fundamental messages in Judaism. Everyone has a role in God's grand master plan. We each have a unique role to play in this world, to do a job or complete a task that only we can do. And if we look at our lives, our family and friends, our past and present, our strengths and weaknesses as just tools that God gave us to fulfill our role in the world for the greater good, everything changes. When disaster strikes, or when we see something, or someone that we can help, even if it's hard for us, we realize that maybe that's why we're in this world, to follow that truth, to make that decision, to help that person to step it up now. When we live this way, when we see ourselves like Esther, we find the courage, the strength, and the ability to act in ways we never imagined. This poem, Let's strive to be more like us, to recognize that we each have a role in this world and live our lives with that much purpose and meaning, knowing that God specifically chose us and gave us all that we have and put us in our circumstances to help Him make a difference and change the world and everything we do.